What's up everybody? My name is Jason and while I'm sitting here in front of my computer, this isn't another vlog. In fact, today I am talking about yet another possible or potential workaround that you can apply if you have a Zoom F6 and you're using the line out to record scratch audio to your camera. Now, I've had before I go into the workaround, let me briefly talk about what the problem is. So the problem that with the Zoom F6 is that when you apply a significant amount of attenuation to the line out signal, uh, so the way Zoom built the F6, the uh, line out is designed to provide either a line out signal or you can attenuate it in software in the uh, recorder down to uh, mic level so that you could then plug it into a camera and record scratch audio from what you're, you know, or a scratch audio track from what you're recording in the F6. Now the problem that I have just recently learned about is that at minus 40 to minus 48 dB, the noise floor on the line out is so high that there's a pronounced an audible hiss in your recordings. Now, I learned about this in a video by Curtis Judd. He's a professional audio recordist and a YouTuber who does reviews and such. And he proffered up two uh, possible workarounds for you to use to get the best audio quality, scratch audio quality out of your F6. And his two workarounds are quite simple. If your camera supports it, run the F6 uh, audio or line out at line level and set the input to your camera to line level. Uh, so this would be if you're using, for example, Panasonic's cameras, a Blackmagic Cinema camera, any of the Cinema EOSes or anything like that, that give you the ability to switch between mic and line levels for your input. His second solution is to use a line level to mic level attenuator cable to connect the F6 to your mic only level or mic level only camera. And in either case, this, those two solutions are going to give you the best signal, uh, best signal to noise ratio possible out of the F6 and into your camera. However, and this isn't necessarily going to be true for everybody, but for me at least, I don't need the scratch audio track to be the full, you know, 96 dB uh, dynamic range that's available in a 16-bit recording. And that would match roughly the output, but the potential best quality output of the line out on the F6. What I need in the scratch audio track on my camera is something that is high enough quality that it will serve as a reasonable backup if I need to, for some reason, I lose a track or my card gets corrupted or lost or something. I have a backup of the mix in the cameras on the camera recording and to provide the audio sync track that I need to synchronize the audio with in like DaVinci Resolve Pluralize or Adobe Premiere Pro. And the short of it on that is it doesn't need to be great. It needs to be good and it doesn't need to be great. And in generally speaking, in uh, my experience, the, you know, you have a 96 dB range for a 16-bit audio file, but more often than not, if I have, you know, the environment that I'm working in sets a noise floor that limits my dynamic range to 40 dB or 50 dB or something in that range, and everything else is just not usable. So if I can get at least 40 or 50 dB out of my F6 via the line out and plugged into my camera, then that, in my mind, should be sufficient to at least be a workable workaround without having to go into uh, extra hardware. And so this is how I have found uh, is a good way to set up with a um, 
Canon, I, I mean, this should work with many other brands, but this definitely works uh, with my Canon 5D Mark IVs. It should work pretty much with anything from Canon, you know, since probably the 5D Mark III, uh, anything that has manual gain control in the camera for recording audio levels. So let's jump around and look at some cameras and get a camera set up with the F6, and I will show you how to essentially maximize the audio quality from the F6 to a Canon 5D Mark IV or similar without having to jump through uh, an attenuation cable or the hoop of an attenuation cable or something like that. All right, so here we are at my desk with uh, my Zoom F6 and my mic pack. Obviously, you can see it's recording right now because I will be doing this while it's recording uh, the actual recording that I'm doing and a 5D Mark IV. Now, in this case, I have the F6 hooked up to uh, both the, uh, with a splitter on the line out, hooked up to the camera that I'm recording and I will be hooking it up to the camera that I'm going to show you how to set this up on, uh, you know, as I go. So before we do anything, hook up any connections, the first thing we want to do on the F6 is turn down the gain of the uh, line out. Uh, we don't want to accidentally, you know, nuke uh, a camera or something like that because we said too hot of a signal, even though I don't think that's quite possible. So what I did here is I hit the menu button, I went to output, I hit line out, uh, You'll have to scroll to these if you haven't already been in them, but since I've been through this uh, for this demo, uh, you know, that's already there. Uh, line out, we want to go to level. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to come down here to the line out level or attenuation, hit the button and drive this all the way down to minus 48 de uh, decibels. So this will ensure that the line out signal is as low as it possibly can go. This is basically mic level. Uh, nothing should have a problem with it. And since we've already got the line out cranked down all the way, I can hook it up to my uh, camera and we can start on the camera side of things. So on the camera side of things, we need to go to the sound recording menu. It's in the shoot for menu for movie mode. So if your camera uh, has a, like on the 5D Mark IV, a live view slash movie mode switch, you have to switch the camera into live view, hit menu, go to the shoot menu, shoot for sound recording down here at the bottom. And we'll just jump into the menu. First thing we need to do is make sure sound recording is set to manual. Now, when I do scratch audio normally, cause I'm using the camera mics, I have mine set to auto and like, I just don't worry about it. And I replace the sound with the audio from my F6 in post, you know, as a, you know, sound replacement. Uh, but for this, we want to be in manual. Second thing we want to do is come down to record level and set the record level all the way down to basically one notch to the right of off. So if you go all the way to the left until that arrow goes dark, you know, goes gray instead of white, and then click one notch back right, that's where you wanna be at. That will be essentially, this is applying the least possible amount of gain that the camera can apply to the audio input. So we're gonna set that. And finally, we don't wanna have the uh, attenuator enabled. Uh, it's not necessary for this. And I have found that potentially if it is enabled, you can get distortion when you try to ramp up the audio to match the uh, 6 dB or minus 60 F B dB FS levels. So now back to the F6. On the F6, there's a really nice function available that makes this pretty easy to do and do accurately and well. And that is this button down here. Um, it doesn't show up tremendously easily, but this button down here, it says minus six dBFS, and it has a picture of a sine wave. And it basically is a, a one kilohertz test tone or slate tone uh, generator. And if we select that, we hit the button, it turns red. The uh, F6 is now outputting on the line out 
connector a minus six dBFS tone, constant sine wave. And so now all we wanna do is to make everything nice and line up well. Um, we wanna make the VU meter on the camera show minus six dBFS. So we just go back up to the attenuation amount and we adjust the attenuation up until the, this meter is basically halfway between minus 12 and zero. That's about minus six dB. Uh, for the 5D Mark IV with my cables and my F6, that works out to be a uh, minus 20.5 dB uh, or thereabouts, somewhere between minus 20, minus 22 uh, dB uh, attenuation on the device. And then we can just back out of the uh, menus and the test tone will stop and you will see that uh, as I'm speaking, my peaks on the recorder are hitting uh, somewhere around minus 6 dB and the peaks that, you know, and am I averaging around minus 12 and the peaks that you see on the meter on the camera are also at around, uh, you know, averaging around minus 12 and peaking up around minus six. Uh, and that's all you gotta do to configure it. And this will provide, in my testing, provides uh, good enough sound quality and enough dynamic range that this is a perfectly acceptable backup track uh, if you need to use it, or um, it works perfectly well with uh, for sync sound or, or syncing audio from the recorder to the video files on the camera. So that's it. Uh, a little bit of attenuation on the uh, zoom and a lot of, uh, or a very little gain on the audio input on the camera. And lo and behold, I get a signal where the noise floor is at least 40 dB, minus 40 dB, if not more below, uh, you know, zero dB FS on the camera. So if you found this useful um, or helpful, smash that like button. Uh, please consider subscribing. You know, all the regular YouTube video stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time.